first got that showed civilian buildings burning in Mariupol. When Russian officials say they are not targeting civilians, those statements demonstra demonstrably false. Scott McLean and Lviv, Clarissa Ward and Keith, thanks so much. So joining me now to discuss is Fyatislav Yurash. He's a member of the Ukrainian parliament. We should note he's joined the Ukrainian okay. army, now vowing to fight against Russia till the very end. Uh, Sviatoslav, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it this morning. I, I know that yesterday you visited Irpin, this is a neighborhood just outside the capital, Kiev, scene of some very fierce fighting. Did you see the Ukrainian military able to hold off the Russian advance there? They have repulsed the Russians. Uh, Russians are trying to take in Irpin almost every day now, and Russian, the Russian military is unable to city. The point here is our forces have been taking their team back time and time again, and it, that's why it's the place of an immense level of fighting happening right now. I'm right now in a different town in Kiev region, and basically fighting is raging all over, all over Kiev. Uh, the, the Russians want to cut off supply lines badly, but they are unable to. They are unable to, so you're still seeing uh, U.S. NATO weapons getting to Ukrainian forces? We are seeing supplies getting in. I can verify exactly what weapons, how many. Uh, the reality is that in this, uh, in this, uh, at this moment, different people are doing different things. I am at the moment uh, unloading humanitarian supplies to various civilians who are trapped in the crossfire. But again, there are many people who are working with those weapons. That they, that they appreciate them immensely. You know, they work like magic against the Russian tank columns, which are destroying our country, killing our people. Do you have any doubt that the Russian military is deliberately, intentionally targeting civilians? Right in front of me, that is a house that was destroyed by, uh, by a shell, which having no, absolutely none of the military significance, and then a family of three was uh, not dead, killed, but uh, they were badly mauled in an hospital nearby. That house didn't have anybody in that who was a military significant military sense of any sort. But the girl that cannot walk and will not be able to, as I was told by the village elder right now. Again, these things don't just in the Kiev region, they are everywhere. Since somebody will tell you that almost within every single frame, Russians are killing our people because they want our people to submit. What we will tell them is our defiance. Defiance which shall again tell us victim no matter what. In terms of Western support, U.S. and NATO military support for Ukraine, as you know, uh, it has been taken off the table to have a no-fly zone. Uh, the MiGs from Poland now off the table as well. What I hear from U.S. military officials is that the real focus should be on air defense systems, uh, perhaps more elaborate mobile defense systems that are, that are there right now. Do you agree with that assessment, that that's the thing Ukraine needs most, or do you need more? We need so very much more. Again, we are fighting the second biggest military in the world. We need all the, all the bits of support we can get our hands on. The fact of the matter is, uh, no fly zone and all those other steps will be reconsidered. And as more of this imagery comes into the Western TV uh, studios that will show them to the Western audiences, they will realize what a disaster Russia is right now perpetrating in Ukraine, what absolute criminal activity it is doing to our people, and your leaders I will have to reconsider, and I hope they will do that sooner rather than later, because many more die, many more people will die as the uh, result of their decision not to have a no-fly zone in Ukraine. Ukrainian and Russian officials are meeting periodically, they're meeting again today uh, to discuss peace. Do you consider those talks real, good faith talks, or do you believe Russia is just playing a delay game here while it continues to advance. We have seen as every single time Russians agreed to a humanitarian corridor, they broke that agreement and shelled civilians who are traveling uh, out of the besieged cities. So we have seen Russians basically try and claim in those negotiations uh, our capitulation, we shall not give it to them. So the point here is again, as uh, Russia understand it will just seize Ukraine, it will get uh, more down to earth in its claims through the peace process. But again, our president from the very beginning has stressed the point about peace and need for peace negotiations, which we were trying to hold for the past eight years. Russia, instead of following up on that, has launched the full film invasion. So, you see it yourself.
Do you ever see Ukraine giving up, giving in to Russia's demands? We have generations and generations of Ukrainians who are fighting for our liberty and different aggressors, and at the end of the day, we have our independent state. So in this situation right now, I do not see us giving up the sacrifice of our ancestors uh, against the Russian threat, which is, however huge it is, again, it is nothing compared with what they faced. Because, again, if generations of the past survived Stalin or survived Putin, Sviatoslav, I know you're taking your own personal risks in this defense. Uh, we here at CNN, we wish you the best of luck and your own safety. Thank you very much. Sviatoslav, you're also a member of the Ukrainian Parliament. Still to come this afternoon.